bliss is self-cognition, is what happens when I or you are aligned with the divine self. And bliss is, in my deepest experience, not even ecstasy. Ecstasy is amazing, but bliss goes beyond ecstasy because bliss has a quiet, sober, utterly pure, clean, tender presence in it. And it's very grounded and very elevated at the same time. And what you know about bliss expands as the path expands. Because many years ago, I thought bliss was ecstasy and I had very profound ecstatic experiences. And I still do sometimes. But I've come to understand that bliss is prepared by ecstasy, but actually much deeper, much calmer, much even more expansive and much more lucid than ecstasy because it's self-cognition, it's self-realization. It's you seeing you and loving you and being loved by you back, mind, heart, soul, and body. That's what bliss is. Eros, again, what you understand about Eros is different at the different stages of your emotional, spiritual, mystical journey. But if you look back on your life, if I look back on my life, Eros has been right from the very beginning, a tremendous force of passion, a force of desire, a force of longing to be united. Sometimes it took the form of longing to be united with a flower because the flower was so beautiful. Sometimes it took longing to be united with a piece of music because it was so gorgeous. I wanted to feel it and hear it with every part of myself. Sometimes it took the place of the direction of wanting to be united with the person emotionally in the soul or sexually. It's always that longing to be united. But as you grow, you understand at a primal level that the real direction of that longing to be united is that that longing for unity is for unity with the one, with the whole of reality. So then Eros reveals itself as passionate adoration, as passionate devotion. It's what infuses your prayer, your saying of the mantra, your hunger for God, your hunger to love more and more and more so that you can be more and more in love and irradiated by love. And then you discover that love is infinite and that you will never be completely one with love. Because however advanced, evolved, transfigured, mutated you are, there will always be more. And then you discover what Eros really is. It is love itself in you, expanding you through desire for more love, infinitely, forever. So the angels are the sublimest examples of this ultimate eros because at any, every moment they're dying with ecstasy and adoration into a deeper and deeper experience of love. And that's eros at its highest and most beautiful and transfiguring power. But they're all connected. The connection between the early experiences of Eros, the Eros of wanting to be one with the flower or a piece of music or another human being, all of that are like the first appearances of this immensely beautiful force that reveals its significance and power as you grow until you're graced 
to experience it in its naked, divine, transfiguring essence. Never deny Eros. Eros is a god. But don't muddy Eros with possessiveness and, and lust and perversity. Those are the shadows of Eros that you have to learn how to purify through grace. But you don't deny the Eros. You just go on a path so that it becomes purer and purer and clearer and clearer without losing any of its gorgeous force. 